You know, one of the things that people say to media critics like me is, why don't you make your own thing if you know how to do it so well? Well, that's exactly what I've done with the release of the Shadow of the Conqueror Enemies of Self graphic novel. The story of a deposed, tyrannical emperor who embarks on a journey towards redemption, becoming 17 years old and obtaining the mythical powers of the legendary Arch Knights. He must battle his inner demons, his violent and cruel inclinations, and enemies both old and new in the hopes of pushing back much of the darkness that he brought into the world. After all, who better to fight the monsters of the world than the greatest monster the world has ever known. This graphic novel has some of the very best art that you will find. We absolutely still can have great stories that's not drowning in woke ideology, because if the mainstream isn't going to make it for us, we can make them ourselves. The graphic novel is available in collector edition covers, and we're selling the hardcover at the price of a soft cover, so it's a brilliant deal, available for a limited time, make sure to get your own, and if you want something really special, you can even get it in leather bound. Both the graphic novel and the second edition version of the full length novel that it's based on. Your support in this project will be absolutely brilliant, you'll love it, and it's just one step closer to us bringing back the stories that we love. Welcome back to The Watch. Okay, uh, Disney Star Wars and or episodes one to three. Now, not even going to bother going into like a, a, a deep dive, moment by moment kind of analysis of every single line, everything like that, because mostly barely anything happens. <laughs> Nothing happens much until episode three. Sorry, I, I'm the lady and I am invading <laughs> this episode as well. I am joined, yes, by <laughs> my lovely wife, the lady. Because uh, it's public holidays, Nathan's away, yes. and so it's all about my wife loves to join me. I'm happy, love to have her here. Can't get rid of me even mm -hmm. on a public holiday. Yeah, so Andor, wow, wow, uh, barely anything happens. Uh, and, until episode three, it's backstory. Yeah, oh, filler. Trying. Not even filler. It's I not like, it's like, like. They're kind of setting things up. Visual sludge with no points. I feel like they're trying to set it up, but it's taken a long time. It shouldn't take two episodes mm. to set the scene. It's caused a, a question. I, have now, I now have a question I'm wondering about. Like, what is worse or better? Uh, and so I'd love your thoughts on this, my dear. Is a, a really badly written show that a lot happens, but the cause and reason, justification for what happens complete nonsense, right? Is that better or worse than a show that is very middlingly written, average? Uh, so, like, nothing horrible, nothing great, the the dialogue and, and lines and conversations isn't like, you know, people speaking that aren't real people or they don't know, understand how the English language works, right? But it's boring and nothing interesting happens. I, What's better? I feel like if it's not painful to watch, that's definitely a step in the right direction. And I feel like this wasn't horrible. So, it wasn't so, gripping. So you would prefer the boring, like, averagely written show over the badly written show where lots happen. So I, I have a feeling you're alluding to a certain <laughs> series here. <laughs> a couple of points of reference we have in the modern day. Unfortunately. Now, which would I choose to <laughs> watch an episode voluntarily if I didn't have to review it? <laughs> um, I would probably give up on one before the others. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the thing. I don't think there's a correct answer. I don't think I there don't, is. Because I have watched shows more recently where stuff does happen, yet it's so so painfully stupid that I'm watching it wondering, what, why are you doing this? People it don't speak like this. It's absolutely retarded and stupid, you idiots. I guess it's getting something out of me. It's making me annoyed. I'm getting an emotion, not a pleasant emotion that you would like to experience, but it's causing something, right? Where Andor caused nothing in so me. This has no frustration it was in just it. boring. It had dialogue that made sense. Yeah, like it's a conversation I could see possibly existing between people. Yeah, so it had conversation points that <laughs> didn't confuse you. It had storylines that were reasonably structured and you could <laughs> see A to B. Kind of, yeah. For, for the most part. The sometimes most part. you sit there going, I don't know where this is going. We'll have to wait and see. Or this doesn't quite make sense right now. So 
we'll probably get some snippets of it soon, mm. but you see children with no adults anywhere. Yeah. There, and you're a, like, what's going why on? are they in tree houses mm-hmm. on this maybe planet, maybe just area? Oh, yeah. They're, but they're not in, like, treehouse people gear. <laughs> they're not just, like, Ewoks. Yeah. They, they have actual you know, sewn clothing, they have pots and pans and they have things that look like they're from a more advanced kind of culture that doesn't quite fit with their treehouse environment. And there are other things as well, uh, like, uh, you know, the reaction of the um, uh, police force thing, they they work for a corporate corporation or something like that, seems weird, overly uh, excessive and the guy's jumping to it, contradicting the orders of his superior, but you know why, but, like... Just seems a little like. <laughs> but I can kind of see that, like, they have different motivations. They, the, yeah. the characters are individuals. Um, they have reasons that they want to get things done or don't want to get things done. Mm-hmm. And I, I yeah. kind of do like that part of it. Yeah, they're, they're like, it's not a, it's nowhere near as nonsensical as a lot of research shows, you know, Rings of Power and other things, where it's just complete. Like, why are you doing it? And the conversation, there's even a, one or two conversations, I kind of thought were okay i enjoyed um and we'll mention them specifically well we won't go like every single scene but the main the highlights, yeah, the highlights the things that fine. stood out to us but even with them in even and so even if i was to say let's just say the plot made sense and i'm not sure it does but let's just say the plot made sense the improving. conversation was uh, realistic everything barely anything is achieved it's like talking about trying to sell something Going somewhere else, someone saying you owe him money, go away, going back to ship, getting something ready, talking to a foster parent, saying I need to leave, going there, okay. setting up, selling thing, <laughs> going somewhere else, another, and nothing's actually happening. Okay, but I feel like the first two episodes were setting up the whole series, so See, you could get to know main characters, but I do grant that it took too long, <laughs> but also that you did get to see different people's motivations. See... There's a, all right, I, I'll, this isn't really a spoiler, but I could give a contrast, right? They introduce a character in, I think it's episode two, and he has like a two minute scene. It's the guy that I thought looked like a dwarf. Yes. Okay, his um, head of security, he kind of runs the thing, everything. He has more character, okay, in his brief intro- introduction, in his like two minute thing, where we kind of get an idea of his temperament, his, his, his view of authority, his goals, his allegiances, everything everything like that in, in that one scene in in like two minutes and he is a more well-defined character than Andor, cassie and Andor, the main character of this show and they spend three episodes where we're just watching him walk at, between things and talk to people gaining nothing it's unbelievable it's interesting how they can manage that like you get a side character and you're like i understand yes. his motivations and character yeah and then you get to main character and you're like I don't know what he's doing what or does why he, he would do he's that. He's looking for his sister, yeah, like, but we didn't really see a, a huge relationship build up in the flashback between his sister and them just looking at each other. Um, and so, you know, I, I, so, did he like his sister? Assuming we do, because we, we, but separated? we didn't actually see like, anything that don't know anything. contextualizes their relationship too much. And then a lot of other things, it's like, we don't know how he really feels about the Empire, if he hates him, likes him, or whatever. He's just... He, or he's, how he's much it influences to, where they live. Yeah, he's just trying to avoid getting caught by the law, but we we don't know if he, like, just hates the Empire. All we know is that he'll do things, you know, against the law. He got caught the in law. a bad situation, yeah. and that's and he where owes everything money. stems from. And, and, and so there's very little meat to go on. And so if there's two episodes, three episodes, where they're to establish character... Like, look at the scene where we got two minutes of a character and there was more established in him than the... Like, and the big boss, he had probably two minutes and by the end of the scene I'm like, I like this guy, yeah, he understands people. And so it's the guy, it's the big... It's not the guy that leads the um, uh, the, uh, the search for the supposed it's murderer. It's his superior. It's his superior that tells him to, this isn't serious, just leave it. I liked him too. It's like, he... Characterization, you know his position, his approach to things. He was more of a character than the main character, which is a problem in the show, right? And and you can do it in a very short time. And it's weird because the writers seem capable of this, yet there is like 
two full episodes, which are mostly pointless. You can achieve everything of what you wanted to let the audience know about where Andor comes from, his motivations, where he's looking for, basically, he's looking for a sister. He comes from a planet that was a mining colony for the Empire that was abandoned, and he was picked up by scavengers on that planet because of a downship. You could have established that in like five it to wasn't ten minutes. Abandoned. Everybody died. Everybody died, accident. but then the kids are alive and we don't know we why. Don't, but they weren't, yeah. wouldn't have been mining, I mean, which is why they're the only ones alive. Yeah, and the whole scene of him going to the other planet uh, to look for the sister, essentially going to a brothel. Uh, not, spoilers, yeah, not spoilers, but we're avoiding the, the main things. But he does something that causes the authorities to search hone him in out, on him, hone right? in on him. That actually isn't needed for what the purpose of the plot was. You could have the authorities searching for um, the guy. So you meet someone in episode three to do a deal. And you could have just had the authorities searching for the other guy to have that confrontation there and achieve that. You, like you could cut the first two episodes, um, just remake like 10 minutes of the third episode to give us the information thing and all being snappy, possibly interesting. You still would have had the problems with Andor himself being a really bland like you know wooden stump of a character uh but at least some like the fact is i was ready to check out at episode two when episode two ended i was like is that it nothing happened it was so boring he almost didn't get to episode three but we got there and that was the best of the three well yeah because it's stuff what the, happened it started. yeah episode three it should, that should have been it like so baffling it makes me wonder Disney, who is looking over these shows that they could honestly get two full episodes where basically nothing happens and is so painfully boring and they, they let that pass through? So they are, are they so desperate for content or are they so inept that they can't make interesting episodes where they just fill it with people talking about... I need to sell something. Oh, you don't give me to you. Uh, yeah, why didn't you let me sell it? I don't know. I don't know. Now I have I got a seller and everything like that. And just, it's it's this conversation stuff with no real stakes or investment or engagement. And like, you compare that to the conversations in say House of Dragons, where all the conversations are really significant. You're hanging off every word because it has implications of what, you know, where the conversations here is just like, He's got something he's trying to sell and he needs to get off planet and, and stuff. But they're not horrible conversations either. They're, they're just, not poor, it's they're, just lengthy. They're not, yeah, they're not poorly written, sorry, but they're not interesting is what I'm saying. Yes, yes. but they, they're not complete nonsense either. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it seems a lot of the things that they include on scene are things that could be done off screen and referred to later or condensed like a, yes. a perfect example is that there's a, a scene with a, it's a flashback scene and when is young and they're walking through a forest and they're walking through a forest doing nothing for a while just walking past trees walking past trees and and the only interesting thing of their walking was when they pass the quarry mine okay then they go back to walking everything and the whole scene of when they're sitting down and they're putting like the makeup on and everything they dwell on that for ages and all they're trying to contextualize is that uh he wasn't old enough to go and then he wants to go and there's like some looks between carriages and they nod and then they let him go like was that really needed? Did we did we need that to learn about his past? And yet, there was a couple of brief interactions with his sister, but condense it. Have like, oh, the ship. We see uh, like a spaceship crashing on the planet. All the kids see it. Cut. Next scene, they're getting their gear. Like, just have them put on a, a thing. There's a group of people. They're ready to ch grow off. The sister's there saying, don't want to go. Uh, like, they're speaking another language, but body language. Show that she doesn't want to go. And he's like, no, i got to go. Someone there saying no, someone then says yes, they go, leave, they walk, really quick things, show the quarry, there, you could achieve it in five to ten minutes, done. Not even, not even ten, that, ten would no, be too long. too long. That's how much you probably yeah. took. Yeah, like ten, two to five minutes is what yes. you'd need. Uh, and you're done, and, and you could condense it and achieve so much more, and it'd be faster paced, hopefully more engaging, but... They dwell on just pointless crap for ages. And one of the things that I noticed was when she goes to send the message to her contact, is actually show her going and sending the message yes. when all they really need to do is cut back to her saying he'll be here in the morning. It would That's be, it. Yeah, it would be really interesting if they did like a, a another, someone does a, a fan cut of this, cut all the pointless crap. And sometimes you'd have a quick, quick like second shots of when she's leaving, she leaves, sneaks in, climbs up, dial, 
called done, right? But instead we had her walking through the streets, looking at people. But being followed. You know, appro- yeah, exactly. Being followed, then him bumping into someone and then approaching a guy, asking for something. It's in the back. He's going into the back, digging through things, climbing up the ladder. Uh, like, it just crap injected to just pad out the runtime. And I'm there just like... They could have just cut bits yeah, I, and put it all in one someone, episode. Someone could genuinely do a, a, a new cut of the first three episodes into one episode and it potentially could be far more engaging and enjoyable. Because you'd get all the good bits. <laughs> yeah, I'll ha- make the plot actually speed forward. You would have other issues then, and the, well, the one of the bigger issues, apart from just the fact that it's so boring, is Andor because he is also a boring character. Yeah, he doesn't do a lot that He's mopey. gives him a personality. And he's not stoic in an interesting way. He's just like, are you looking for my sister? I mean, they try and say that he's, he's clever and competent, right? Because uh, well, someone is interested in for, for his skills later on. But and then they don't else- actually show him doing anything clever or competent. It's just stuff that off screens. How did you get it? And then he's like... You know what would have been a cool episode? Showing him getting the thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, instead they show things as and tell things like him having all these women, which you never see, him, you know, owing money, which you, you mm-hmm. got to see a little bit of that kind of come in. But that's about all the backstory yeah. you get for his personality. Yeah. And so for such a boring show with a very uninteresting character the most depressing thing about this this is probably the most well written star wars like well written thing, disney thing at disney the star wars thing they've done in a while and it's pretty boring and bad still but it's not as episode inc- 3 was pretty good and there was Compared some to the others it was like oh this is a bit see of i wouldn't call it good i'll call it very average and predictable but in comparison to the boredom we had previously it was like oh at least something's happening now i mean We'll go step by step because I'll point like, and it won't be like detail step by step. We're going to jump in larger segments, and I actually get the um, because all right. So now spoilers. I would give Andor maybe a three, four out of ten, maybe. But the thing is, it's like that's where I'm divided. It, some parts are competently written in the sense that it's it's a plot that might make sense, and it's dialogue that you know, conversation characters. But it's structured in such a boring way that that pulls it back down for me. And so it might have gotten points up, but because now it's just so boring and complicated, especially the first two episodes, we can't just judge it on the third episode. It has two episodes that That's true. were, were, n- were nothing. There were a couple of good scenes in the first two episodes where you kind of yeah. went, that's well done, so I enjoyed that Maybe bit. a three out of ten then for me. I reckon that's a little bit low, actually. Yeah, what would you give it? You were giving threes to, like... She-Hulk. No, She-Hulk's like a one or a two for me. Okay. It sounded more like a three for a little while, but I'm breaking between four and five for me because, yeah. you know, it's a bit Star Wars-ish. It's, so it still has that feel. They haven't ruined that completely. And, yeah. And they do do different environments and show different mm. aliens and different spaceships. And so it does have the Star Wars feel without being too ripped off of being on the same planets as every other Star uh, Wars. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I could give episode three maybe a four out of ten for me. Okay. But episode one and two really brings it down. Sorry, what were you saying? I was just saying, like, it's nice to be on a planet that's not the same ones as every other show. I agree. Because I feel like mm. we keep repeating the same the, planets. There were a couple... it's kind of nice to yeah, have a difference. Yeah, there were a couple of moment things that I could compliment. Like, I remember as we were watching, I complimented the security guy's uniforms. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't a carbon copy of um, the, the Empire, because it's not meant to be Empire. Yeah, it had that kind of feel to it. I thought, oh, so those uniforms... But that's like scraping the bottom of the barrel looking for compliments. Uh, so anyway, he arrives at a brothel, right, uh, looking for his sister, and there's this kind of convoluted, oi, why, like, why are you getting served before us? And it's all to set up him getting jumped by these guys later on. And I, I, I said to my wife, oh, these guys are going to jump him afterwards. It's such an obvious setup. And so... Like, so you could always already tell from their personality they'd been drinking and they were grumpy and they were already yeah. full of themselves. And so... Yes, it, but predictable also means that it makes sense, that that's what they've set it up to I do, guess. and you're not in conflict of why on earth would they do that? They were fine before. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like, we had to watch this three times over to figure out what happened, because this was incompetently done, where he's getting jumped, okay? There's this guy that walks up to him, and he... So we're... If you haven't guessed already, we're in spoilers now, by the way. Uh, this is what happens, right? So They have him stopped. Have him stopped. He gets... That's it. See, see, he headbutts him on the back of the head, and that's all you see happen. And then you don't see this guy again for a bit. Yeah. And, and, and gets we watch this very... So we'll slow down. One blaster shot, nowhere near him. Um, they, they wrestle over. Blaster shot, doesn't go anywhere near the other guy. Him. Second blaster shot, bounced, and then, and then hits, hit a wall. Hit a wall. And doesn't rebound again. Then he punches him like in the throat. I body slams it. And if anyone could have received a serious enough injury to have been killed, it was the guy that just got body slammed and full on into the ground, the right? That could have given him a knock on the head to kill him. But no, he's fine. The one that's actually dead is the guy that he headbutted. And I'm like, hang on, what? <laughs> and he's like, where, what, he's dead? Hold on, what happened? I'm like, like literally, had to, we had to go back, watch it three times, because we thought, did he actually get shot or something? And no, he didn't. He just fell back and died <laughs> from, like that. And they say he hit his head when he fell. And you're like, what, really? Because the other guy got full on body slammed and he's okay. And like, you look, you look at, they do a close up of his face and there's not even like a bloody nose from being head butted. He's just kind of, dead on the ground and we kind of left going what what do you mean what just happened and so this other guard is saying look 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 we'll just go to the authorities we'll explain that it got out of control you know he fell and hit his head because we actually don't even know how he died anyway so See, you know i can understand why um he would be skeptical of this guard who's just oh, yeah, yeah, been horrible of course of course i can understand that part but if the guard was genuine that's exactly what you would do you'd be like this got out of hand. Mm -hmm. He's dead. We don't actually know how it happened. He might have hit his head going down, and the, the, we don't. We actually don't know. But this guy has already proved himself to be sketchy <laughs> and would lie through the teeth to show that he's innocent. And this dude just killed his mate. Oh yeah, are you talking about like it? So I, I think in his position, choosing to kill the guy and just cut cut his losses and run, I could see that's a very pragmatic choice. And I think there's a logic. Yeah, just like. Because this guy did, he's a, probably a murderer, very clearly. He would have killed him if he resisted and everything. So, But I can also understand when the guard is pleading. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because he's making sense. Oh, well, yeah. He's, strangely a, enough. A, a, he's like, not well, spouting He's secrets. a coward. He's a bully. So yes. bullies are cowards. And when they uh, lose their power and control, they become, oh, save me and everything like that. But, but everything he's saying is actually the truth. It's like, mm. yes, it got out of control. Yes, he's suddenly dead, and you don't actually know how, but he probably bumped his head on the way down. Yeah, but see, that, the dead part, I'm like, I'm still hung up on that. It's like, I, it feels like, it's like, he didn't... At so least, I thought he got shot. Yeah, well, exactly. At least show show us him falling back and his, like, neck landing on a corner of, like, a, I don't know, some type of pointy outcrop gutter something. something. But well, all we saw was that, and he fall back and suddenly is dead. And I know you can try and explain it, but the fact that they didn't show it, it just feels really odd, especially when we saw this big guy who's on screen gets picked up and pummeled into the concrete ground and he's fine. And so for the inciting incident of this series, because it's this incident that leads, you know... This the, starts the whole uh, series. The, this is the, everything. Yeah, like the, the guys uh, hunting for him and also it's the inciting incident that caused Andor to try and sell his uh, special Imperial device he found to get the money to be able to get off world and, and, and go into hiding and stuff. So this is it. And for the inciting incident, there's something really bafflingly odd that wasn't shown well at all. So that was like a f the first big question thing uh, that I had. Uh, he, and he flies off planet. We see a uh, new droid introduced. And look, I know droids are impractical in Star Wars, like the uh, Astro Droids R2-D2 is an impractical one. This felt like, I don't know, it, he can like, like a spring or, or, or cording, he can go up and down for no seemingly functional reason. Well, I think it gets to give him a bit of personality and show him reacting to things. I know, but th exactly. That is, the, that's why and they that's did fine. it. But I like functional reason for what they have. But sometimes people build things because they're fun and they're interesting. Yeah, well, look, it, it had more personality than the main character. <laughs> Like, literally, the robot shows fear, um, uh, annoyance, and already more emotional range than the main character. That's a problem. Uh, but they even... So, 
even though they show this robot having emotion, right? Was it really necessary? Is this robot important for the plot? No, uh, it's just there. And so it ha they literally have a moment where it gets confronted by like dogs. Um, alien dogs. Alien dogs. And uh, that's like, I don't know, a minute or two where we have that whole scene. There's the dogs there. They look kind of like being a dog and a warthog. Yeah. And it's like... And it like crouches down to try to make a smaller to pop, you know, target yeah. as possible. And they go around mm. it. But it wasn't needed. The scene... It just said to introduce a robot that is just like, just have the robot, I don't know, appear in the ship because, and then he has like converse, uh, a, a conversation where he's like, I need you to lie. That'll take processing. And he's just like, again, we didn't need it. Like there's so much pointless filler. But they're making that droid more than just like a tool in the house, but a character. Yeah. Cause they want to sell merchandise, but it's not well, useful yes, in the plot. But <laughs> they're still making it a character. Yeah. I mean, characters should have purpose in the plot. Like, do have it in a scene when it's doing something, but it was doing anyway, nothing. Here we come to the treehouse kids. Yes. Yeah. And you're kind of looking, going, okay, these are sewn outfits. They don't look like treehouse outfits. They've got beads and okay. clothes that look too big for I them. I think they look scavenged. That looks like yeah. an older person. And so you're thinking. Thing. Yeah. That would make sense because it's, the so when you come into it, you're like, I don't really know why there's only kids or why they're in yeah. tree houses, but look like they've got stuff that's been manufactured. Mm. And so you figure this out as it goes along. Yeah, there's like <laughs> they dwell a lot on like this wall with gloves, and I like it's like they hang them up at the end of the work day and pick them up in the morning to go to work, it, uh, and no, nobody steals them. Yeah, like uh, lockers. <laughs> It just seems impractical. Like people, yeah, they would get flogged all the time. Other than that, I don't mind the alien world. Like yeah. a lot of the buildings uh, have this brick kind of feel, and they they kind of mix like low tech practicality with high tech thing. And so in that sense, it feels like Star Wars. I, I you know, and that's what I mean. I, I this isn't really a point of praise. This is the bare minimum you would expect with a competently made show. And so this is like still middle of and the ground. And that's why I feel like Five is competent. When you get below five, you're starting to but that's what, incompetent. That's what I mean. It has those moments, but nothing that exceeds above it, but a lot that shoots underneath it. Because there's a lot that is just poorly done, and that's why it can't be a five. I guess I judge it by their highest consistency. <laughs> See, I need to balance it out. It's like, it, I do, because I, I agree, they they reach a five in some moment, moments, but they reach like a two in other moments, which is really bad. And so to even it out... I don't know about a two. Maybe they reach... <laughs> Some of them are that bad. Uh, what about the pointless filler and the, and the inciting incident where the guy just dies and, off and you don't see why, you know? <laughs> they're, they're moments. I am more critical than my wife, so <laughs> I think you, people will see this. And uh, and I know you guys are here for be, having a pulled apart and being critical, <laughs> but I'm also a little bit generous with these sort of things. You like if being I charitable. Find, my yes. wife is a very charitable and person. And I like to be able to enjoy shows and look for the good in them. I love that about her. I'm not sure if she likes my critical side too much. <laughs> um, we balance each other out just a little bit. Just a little bit. He needs an alibi for where he's gone. And they have a whole scene dedicated to them making an alibi that doesn't come up again. This character is not questioned about Andor's, you know, whereabouts that night. So guess what? So it's basically set up so that he knows that the other guy's in trouble and to keep an eye out. That's what it's set up for. But they could have achieved that without that scene. They could just said, showed that they're mates. And when the ba the guys, the, you know, the security people are after him, that would still justify his scene in, in um, sabotaging the ship. This and you didn't know who they were after without that bit of information. Oh, they could have done it so easily. But that was their yeah. way of choosing to do it. Like so, like a, several minutes, and then they're specifically setting up an alibi, which is not used in the plot at all. But he didn't know that it was going to be used. No, but the writers it. should. Yes. <laughs> and, but and, the character did it. <laughs> and, because, and because of that, you only want to d show on screen important things or that's going to do something. So they need to be important, pushing forward, developing character, or entertaining. You can have things that don't progress, you know, story or contextualized character or setup arcs if it's fun. But this is just them talking <laughs> about, uh, like, and so you could cut it. Like, there is so much filler in this. Um, 
All right, so then we get to a scene that... This is that the good scene. We actually, I, set, I, enjoy, I thought this was good. My wife enjoyed it, mainly because of this guy here. He had just a pragmatic kind of understanding. And I'm not sure... I've seen people um, uh, talk about this. So the creators have been commenting on the show. And one of the comments is that everything is corrupt and everything is incompetent, apart from like these key characters where... Uh, and it's mainly men. All incompetent men. They went out of their way to say it's incompetent men that's um, ruining the empire. And this is the first character we're introduced, which we would then clearly connect that is supposed to be a demonstration of the incompetence of the empire. The thing is, though, he actually proposes a very pragmatic kind of um, utility to ignoring this. And it's that if um, there's more problems, okay, that will attract more attention of the empire and more attention to the empire will affect the business and affecting the business means they won't be able to supply people with jobs. And it has this, he, he, he actually he, describes- He lays out the situation really well. Really clearly. These two men were on duty. They were in a brothel while on duty, intoxicated with an alcohol we prohibit. They, were yeah, they, 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 they what did he, like he actually that, this was really interesting I agree they were at a venue in which they weren't permitted to go because it's like illegal it's a brothel right mm -hmm. spending more money than they the occupation justified them having drinking alcohol that was illegal <laughs> um, and were known as troublemakers and were known as troublemakers and so that's all very valid reasons like this bringing this into more public scrutiny especially the empire could have some and he's like, things. so let's just make it out that they were helping somebody. It went wrong. Don't make it them too big of a heroes. But that's after he says it was probably this. They were shaking down some guy, which was exactly what like yep. his assumption was bang on the money. And so he actually that by him, his first assumption actually being the correct conclusion shows that he is so experienced in this job that he actually has a good inside intuition as to what actually happens. Right. And then he goes on to say. We'll give them, uh, like, uh, they were doing something wrong. He actually gives them something generous, everything like that. So that their families don't need to be ashamed. There's yes. no tension brought to it as a criminal act, but that they just did something good. Yeah. And if they, like, if he listened to this guy, the matter would be resolved really quickly and problem solved. All the problems he says could happen would be resolved. They won't be addressed. The... Uh, scummy like um like breaking the law you know authority figures that that you know ended up getting shot are actually getting a much more generous heroic kind of narrative send off, send -off <laughs> than they deserve and it's solved instantly god like this guy hire this guy <laughs> um and so just as far as doing right by the business and you know not yeah. de degrading the memory of these two people <laughs> Far from being incompetent, this is actually really efficiently it's resolved. Well written. It's written. It's beautifully written that he knows but, his job and knows the people and knows the area. It's but, great. But what's badly written is the show is actually contextualising that he's in the wrong. And this guy who's on screen is the right because we've got to find the murderer when the assumption of the um, uh, the, the, the other guy is completely right. He's, he's probably just defending himself while he's getting shaken down by corrupt, you know, officials. It's exactly what happened. <laughs> But no, it's a murderer, and so this guy's wrong, and he's incompetent and corrupt, and this guy is the, is the, he's going to be... The Boy Scout. The boy, I, he, he's going to do, do it right. And I know the show isn't sh demonstrating him as a good person, but he's an overly authoritative he, by, the books, he, he, by the books person. Yes. Um, and he's very passionate about what he feels yeah. is justice. And so you also get to see his motivations and personality. And you're like, okay, yeah. I can understand where he's coming he, from he, and why he's doing what he's doing. That's good. He's got more personality than the main character. Because you understand <laughs> yeah. what his motivations I, I would, are. I would more happily watch a show around this guy. Better yet, I'd watch a show around um, uh, this guy here. Like, give us a show of him. Okay. But, so... Yeah, a character that actually was contextualised well, but then he disappears and we never see him again. And this guy, of course, doesn't listen because he's got to find the murderer and go by the books and all that stuff. Uh, and I am, and sorry, at this moment I'm wondering, well, where is the incompetence that the, every, the, the commentary was saying existed everywhere? Maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is all intentional, that they're so showing... So they do talk a little bit about the emperor, Empire's mm -hmm. laxity and stuff a little bit later. Yeah, um... 
All right, so next scene is he approaches a friend who's a mechanic that can sell uh, illegal goods and has got like something really big or, or expensive and she's a little cut that he didn't sell it through her before. But so now... yeah, she was first saying, I can't call him in unless I've got lots of stuff to sell. Mm. It's not worth his trip. Yeah. He's like, well, I've got something big to sell. She's like, well, what is mm. it? Like, you haven't given me anything. And he tells her and she's cut that he, he's been holding out on her. He's like, well, ha- well, what if I buy it from you and... Mm. Then I can sell it. Yeah, and so, okay, that scene actually establishes some plot, some conflict, some intention that you can leave it. Leave this scene. That There's something that actually worked. And then, of course, they do need to establish that uh, she's going out with this guy. It's important to set up what he does, and so that's fine. We cut back to another flashback, and this is the one that drags on, where... They're just getting ready, and then they're slowly painting themselves. And, and this you see is it over and over again. Over and over again. Face paint. Exactly. Oh. And I'm skipping forward, but they dwell on this for a while, and then he paints himself. Everyone looks at him, but then, like, he's going to do it anyway. Says it's okay. And it's like, wow, that was barely established anything of significance, apart from, like, a brief, in, like, oh, there's his sister, there's Andor. You could cut so quickly, get rid of all of it. Um, and so back to uh, the this guy and his searching. He's find telling people log. how to find. Yep. To yep. Um, and then uh, this is another pointless scene where he owes someone money, and then it doesn't come up again. <laughs> it well, would they've never come up out again. A couple of times that he owes people money. He could have just said it. He could. He could have said well, like. Well, they had to I'm, do it over and over. Exactly. It's like <laughs> you don't need this scene, and it just drags everything down, and. I mean, one of my other favourite characters is the is the big alien there, but that's it. It's like use him in something other, something interesting, something purposeful and useful, and a throwaway, pointless scene that doesn't do anything. And but we'll never see him again. He won't appear again. No. Neither will this guy. It, it has no significant purpose for the larger plot. But he had a cute little line, and he had a fun little spot, and he's done. But you could like. Remember how I said that sometimes you can justify a useless scene if something intri- like entertaining happens? This isn't fun enough to justify it. And if he, because he has this character's potential, grab him, put him into a scene that is important, boom, like, done. Um, and then you can cut this fluff, and there we go. Uh, she needs to go on an errand, and again, drags on, she's walking through the street, she's getting followed, and then the guy bumps into someone and loses her... You could cut off of that. And then she arrives, talks to a guy, goes out the back. This is, yeah. And then climbs up the thing, all to make a phone call. This is like, send a message. Like, I'm not kidding. That's a, she's like, she leaves. We're looking at, um, so yeah, the 29 minute, minute mark. And so that's nearly a full, like, two minutes, right? That you could cut. And it's just her walking to make a like, phone call. Didn't even need to show her sending the message. All she had to do is say he'll be here yeah, in the morning. That is like off nearly a full two minutes. Pointless. Uh, okay, so this one you could almost keep, but it's just like he's caught. We're searching for a murderer, and the, and the people there seem to be incompetent because they wouldn't really look in certain areas, but he knows what to do. Uh, another scene you could probably cut as well because he, he, had, he borrowed a ship and he's changing the log on the ship. And then he's not allowed to borrow the ship again. Yeah, this seems weird. Because like, he let him borrow it in the first place in this junkyard mm. or wherever it is. And didn't seem to have a problem there. And all of a sudden he's... I do see one utility with it. One Explaining big, the ship. Explaining... Why he no, explaining why he... Yeah, why he doesn't have a ship to get off planet yes. now. Uh, but you could achieve it pretty quickly. Like, you know, when he's talking about it with the girl or something like that, she says, what are you doing? I need to leave town. Why do you need money to leave town? And I was like, I, I can't use the ship anymore. I, you know, I almost got caught last time and I was just borrowing it. Uh, unless I steal it or something, and they're done. Like you could skip this scene with a, a couple of lines in another scene to, yeah. to give us the, uh, the context we need. But again, they dwell the whole thing on, drags on. Back to flashback, there's his sister. And then they spend ages walking through. So they're walking, he looks... Um, oh no, that's that's that that's no, the end of the episode. That's just the end of the episode. Her watching the yeah. show. That episode one. It's like wow, that was boring. <laughs> Barely anything happened. It's like okay. I was like, well, all right, all right. Episode one. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens in episode two. And episode two is where I was almost ready to. Because episode one's supposed out. to be the pilot, the hook, the thing that gets everybody wanting mm-hmm. to watch the whole series. Mm-hmm. Episode two. 
uh, starts right where episode uh, one left off. They're walking through the forest, going over trees, past more trees. Oh, look, they're, they're walking past even more trees. Oh, more trees, but, but now they show this, a little bit of tech. A little bit of tech. Old and run down. But he walks through some past some more trees, and finally they show us something interesting. A huge mine. And so that was a. Well, they start so walking through the cool, trees because you could say it was unused. So, it's, and then it, but it had been still took a while. Like, yes. imagine if they just started with this scene here, opening of the episode. That that Going looks pretty cool. Through a couple cool. of trees and looking at that. I because that's a cool visual. Yeah. But then, that's it. Um... <laughs> this guy's a bit of fun. I don't know. Like, it has no purpose apart from maybe world building, but still, they dwell on him a lot. Not just once, he has multiple two or three times. times. Where they have him ringing the town bell, and he settles his ear, he plugs in or earphone on, and rings the bell in style. Like he he, he likes his job. Good on he him does. for liking the job. He poses, and then. Oh, mate, amazing. I'm so riveted, though. So he just loves his job, and that's great. And still, I, I, again, they cut back to him um, hammering the things at one point. Yeah, they do it again. They, I, they, they really like to show this guy hitting the drum. The bell, or whatever it is. So nothing really important has happened. I mean, yeah, these people, they're talking. She saw something on the screen... And then he sees it, and oh, it's a it's a thing looking for someone from Canary or a Canary male potential plot hole. How could you tell this guy is a Canary just by looking at him? You, you can't. You so can't. somebody needs to know that that's where they're from, and they know that that's where this person is from because he mentioned that he was looking for a Canary girl. But he didn't say he, he was Canary. But he said that it was his, his sister. sister. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so deduction would be that that's where he was from too, if they're siblings. But. And so they've gotten that from interviewing I the guess, um, hostess. Yeah, yeah. And so that's that's not a problem. It's how anybody would know who a canary is, like, because mm. they've they start establishing that nobody's even heard of this place. I mean, yeah, and they find out he knows, but because he found out some way. Uh, but you know, she told him. They establish it later. Yeah. Uh, so this is his kind of foster mum comes back, but then she finds out that uh, the. There's a, a warrant out for his arrest or something. For questioning. Questioning. For questioning. And then he goes out, meets the girl, um, and he tries to call off the uh, the sale, but she's like, I already reached out to him. He'll be here tomorrow. Okay. I'm not sure he needed a scene to establish that. I, but... I don't even... Yeah. But anyway, they want the boyfriend to look jealous, and so he uh, gives a tip that... You know, the person they're looking for is there. Um, and look, yeah, jealousy, that's fine. They learn. And still, we're, at like, we're 12 minutes into this episode, right? And uh, what's really been established? He, they've been tipped off. They've been tipped off. And, and that, that's the main part of it. That's it. Oh, no, the, the mine was pretty important. We saw the mine saw the when mine. he was a kid. But still, it's not a lot. Then she goes back uh, to the boyfriend and... They, uh, that's it. She just goes back. This guy I liked. This was the character we're talking about where his introduction in just a minute or two gives us so much about his personality, his thing. And the actor, I'm pretty sure he is the coal miner from uh, Ch the Chernobyl miniseries. So in the Chernobyl miniseries, they go and they need to get coal miners to work from him. And the leader of the coal miners, I'm almost certain it's this guy. I don't know. He has a presence and he can just carry himself as a leader. And that... I like him as an actor. I even like him as a... bit of nothing else. He, yeah. He's done a great job in this one. Yeah. And he, I reckon he could play a dwarf. Like, just in a fantasy setting, just a dwarf. He'd make a great dwarf. But anyway, uh, characterization, uh, motivations, his outlook in life, his, uh, he feels authority, hard work and all that stuff. And it was actually really efficiently done. If only they did everything else this well and efficiently, I would be a bit engaged. This is this is like dialogue where a lot's happening and we're learning a lot about a character as it's happening, which makes it engaging. Contrast that to where I need to sell something. I, no, no, I don't need to sell something, but I already set up the sale. Oh, it'll be tomorrow. Okay, then. So have something else happen that's interesting. Um, but he gives reasons for his, mm -hmm. you know, enthusiasm for 
getting this murderer. Like yeah. he wants to protect their their people. He wants to, you know, make sure that people are, know that the security is going to do their job. Like he he has good reasons, and he's like, mm. "Yep, I'm with you. Well, let's do this." And he's got a presence, and they they show that a little bit later where he's really good at expressing himself to mm. motivate people. Yeah, he should be the leader. Give him a promotion. Make a show about him. I like him. Uh, and all right, so. He, uh, ah, the, um, it's not about government, it's a plot device. It's revealed what it is the thing is selling. It's like an Imperial device that if you plug it in, you can find out where other Imperial ships are or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Flashback, kids again, uh, they're walking through a forest. A, uh, they're still walking through a forest. They get to the ship. One girl goes on her own. She approaches it and then she ends up getting shot. And so then, she starts poking bodies. Yeah, and so she doesn't get shot at first. So, oh, we're on. not even there yet. Yeah, that whole scene was just... Them sneaking. At the ship and... They didn't you, show the ship yet. They're just sneaking and they look... No, I'm pretty the sure area. they show the ship because Did the they? girl is approaching it, right? And they're watching Oh, yes, air. they show a little bit of the ship. She's approaching it. But this is the is end of the scene. Yes. You could start the scene with just right there and cut all the build-up to it, which was... Yeah, not, have her approaching and then yeah, watching. Yeah, that what, would have done it. It didn't build suspense. There is so much filler. All right, so new guy. He, he's obviously the guy that is going to be... Uh, um, He's there for the sale, the buying thing. And uh, he lands. She wakes up with a boyfriend. She leaves. He's in a mood. Yep. Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, riveting stuff. He is uh, on his little, in his hidey way, preparing things, talking with the robot about stuff. Goes back to his foster mum. She looks around in his room. And it's like, oh, wow, I'm just so engaged. Back to the flashback. Girl walking along the thing. Starts poking people. Yep. She ends up getting shot. Uh, he sees, doesn't say anything. Okay. Is, is he regretful? Anyway, that's where she gets shot. Um, and then he gets basically shot by all the other kids. They all have these blow darts. Yeah, blow darts. And, with them. and then they all want to leave. And they're and really sad that the girl's dead. And so they take her away without any yep. further investigation. And he stays yep. behind to explore the ship on his own. Yep. Okay. I, I, but I, they don't even show that he's going to explore at this point. He's just looking at yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, he tries to uh, get a ship off planet and it's going to cost more than... And so he has to buy, get money to get it off. Uh, get off the ship, uh, off the planet. Okay. The um, security force are preparing... There's a guy that we like. He gives a speech. They're all ready. motivational. They're all yep. hyped up. He gives a speech that's really bland and doesn't motivate anyone. Which and is part of his character, so they I get that up. I, okay. like, you could probably keep this just for characterization that yes. this guy isn't a good people person. Yeah. Um, so I don't mind this scene. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 He's on like a, a, a like a shuttle bus, a space sci-fi Star Wars shuttle bus, and he has a, and someone has a conversation about why he's here to get something. You could probably cut the entire thing. The whole thing would have been fine if he just disembarked the yeah. whole transport. I don't, I, I don't know if this guy's going to appear again. I thought you would only introduce this character if you're going to do something with him. Why do we need to know anything about him? I don't think they're going to do anything. He was just there to say hello. Cut the whole scene. You don't need it. Uh, look, I'd like to be wrong. I'm happy if this guy Maybe appears again. Maybe he'll come back Maybe and talk somebody will. else's ear off. Maybe he will. But if he appears again just to chat with someone, <laughs> it's like, what? Look, I'll be I'll be happy and hope I'm wrong if he appears in some important way for the plot, which would then justify this whole this scene, yes. which is made to introduce him. Otherwise, and I, I get the feeling it's just there for filler. And oh, this is our world. Well, I mm. welcome. We need a shuttle bus to go from so, port to city. Mm, there is this um, uh, floor. OK, in amateurish writing that uh, when you're trying to teach people how to write and I, I've like I've, I've gone to many writing workshops, I've participated in like several years of university lectures on creative writing and everything. And, and one of the things that they actually talk about that you don't want to do. So this is like writing 101 stuff. Yeah, you love your world building. You have like this world building document that is like, you know, heaps ages on and on and on. Right. 
But to pause the, the, the story, just to spend like, you know, several pages on uh, on just the world building thing with no purpose just for like, oh, look at that hill. There was a hill of this great battle where these events happened and everything. And if that's not going to have any relevance to the plot, it's just the writer, you know, pleasuring himself on his own world building because he thinks it's so great, but it's boring to the reader because they don't need any context. Now, if anyone's read my book, I'm a big world builder. Don't get me wrong. There's moments where I uh, put in elements of the world building for the purpose of the story. Okay. There's a moment where uh, the main character is reminiscing about some of the kingdoms that, that were destroyed and how they've been forced into the new Hamara. It's important contextualization because you get to find out how evil he was. Okay. And the empire that is here. And here we have a shuttle bus. Yes. Discussion that's a guy being nosy and chatty. Why? Well, like, what relevance does that have to the story? And so this is like writing 101, right? If you want to have exposition that just makes the world flesh out the world a bit, do it in an interesting way that is important to the plot. Don't just go off on a tangent where you info dump, oh, look, at it, it's the world, the world. It, like, isn't our world great for no purpose? Because then it's just the writer thinking, oh, I love this world. You know, it feels like that's what this scene is. It's just like we have characters and we have a world. What is it achieving? So there's that scene and it drags on. I think it goes over for two scenes. Yeah. With the gap in between. And uh, I forget. What? Oh no, that's the episode. That's the episode. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and the episode ends with like, wow. <laughs> I was just like, what was what was that? Not like in I can't believe uh, something so ridiculous happened. It was more like literally what was there in the episode for to be an episode. Everything was set up and nothing was paying like, off for anybody. After that, I was like, after this episode, I was like. This show is useless and pointless. Give me a break. If I wasn't reviewing it, I would have checked out. I'm done, okay? <laughs> but for the completionist review sake, we went to episode three. So episode three is easily the most interesting episode. Um, so flashbacks, it goes back to the... Now, it's not to say there isn't filler. Uh, there is. But anyway, the kid is on the ship and he spends a long time going to the ship. Dead people around... He sees his reflection. It seems to be like it, this is the first time he sees his reflection. Which is a bit weird because <clears throat> they have water yeah, and they have I, I don't get stuff. it. Yeah. And then he starts smashing his everything that has a reflection so he can't see his... Why? We don't know. It's like... I don't know. <clears throat> it's just confusing. Yeah. Okay. And it takes a while to get There's a bit of a meltdown there. here. So, yeah, okay. But we don't even see the smashing yet. He's yeah, but no, no, we see the first smash. He sees his reflection and it's like, ah, and that's it. Okay. But you kind of see the smash, the yeah. lead up to the smash. There's a lead up to the smash. So, small moments like this are cool. Like when we saw yeah, the so quarry. I was about okay? to say, I hope you didn't mind this one, because this yeah. kind of set this, up the big scale yeah, yeah. equipment that was going on and the people working. Mm -hmm. This is exactly one of those moments where showing some of the world for the purpose of showing the world is great because it's short, but it's interesting yes. and it's cool. And so, yes, do that where... They're basically, it's a massive scrapyard. They're scrapping giant starships. Yeah. That, that's cool. But instead, like, we have, like, this dragging on seed of, like, a guy saying, why well, are you here? You're here to sell something. Well, you know what you say? If you want to fight, can't fight it here. You won't fight it anywhere. I was like, get on with it, you know? But something like this. This yeah, is beautiful. This is cool. Great. This was cool. And then, uh, ah, look, there's Cassian Andor there. And his, uh, like, friend is there. And, you know, you... You could just have this scene. You know the scene where, like, my alibi? You didn't even need that. Just cut to this. Now, of course, you would know some people here. He sets a friend. He's needing to leave. And he's like, he's look after... Going. Yeah, look after my uh, foster mum. She'll have the money I owe you. And that that sets up the friend helping him later on. Yeah. So you could cut that entire scene in the previous... Like, you, literally, you could condense these three episodes into one solid one-hour episode. It'd be far more snappy. Probably 45 minutes yeah. the way it's going. <laughs> yes. Yes. You still have the issues with the main character being so bland. And I have to say, just because they have the previously part at the start and the whopping big credits at the end, yeah. they're not nearly as long as they look. Pads it out. Yes. 
Look, small pet peeve. I mean, they have an entire droid dedicated to just bringing stairs to a thing. I know they have that on, like, um, uh, planes in the modern day. But this is, like, sci-fi. What, you're telling me they don't have a fold-out thingy that just folds out stairs? They need a dedicated... I don't know. It's a small nitpick. I'm going to do it anyway, all right? And I think droids, for funny reasons, are funny. All right, fine. Look, I know <laughs> Star Wars have, it, like, pointless droids for the same... I, mm, that's been a criticism. I, I, I have issues with Star Wars world building overall. There's a lot of redundancy and silliness in Star Wars world building. Everything. And so sometimes you just got to accept it I, and say, it's Star Wars. They, they have droids, artificial intelligence. Why aren't they running gun turrets everywhere and just have computer targeting things? But it's always human. To, uh, you know, uh, I could I could go on. Um I like the Star Wars universe, but it's not perfect world building. There's a lot of contradictions. Um, and those are just pet peeves I have. So it's still like he, he, he gets off the ship. The guy says goodbye and we might. Tells him to watch his wallet and it doesn't get yeah. pocketed and that's it. Mm -hmm. The he's girl walking, approaches walking, him. And he's walking. Yep. And then they like, it. will Cassian be there? Just exposition stuff. You could probably condense a lot of this. The uh, ship arrives and... Uh, it's a Star this Wars a enough cool. ship. It's got little troop carriers underneath that yeah, take yeah. off. That's and a bit cool. Star Wars ships have this interesting um, impracticality to their designs that's actually fairly consistent. And as a result, it's a style now. Yeah. And it looks Star wars -y enough. That's fine. Um, now, the one thing I thought when I was looking at them on these carriers, I'm mm -hmm. like, I hope some of those carriers aren't as packed as them because mm -hmm. they do need to fit an extra person coming back. Yeah. And it's looking a bit crowded already. But granted, they probably don't care about his comfort all that much. True, true. Uh, so flashback, now we find out, ah, oh, the foster mother was a scavenger. They need to get there before the Republic arrives. Um, and they can probably, probably kill everyone there. They say basically say, we find uh, the little kid, Andor, is just smashing all the reflections because reasons. We don't know the reasons. Like... If this was competently written, I would expect they will explain this later on. And they might. I'm not sure they will, because there's been a lot of incompetence in the writing so far, where they just have scenes for the sake of filler. And I'm wondering if this is just, oh, he's freaking out because it's so deep and he's a friction. I'm not just wondering why. why? What's going on? And they very well might not address it at all. It's possible, but they, they have I hope, gradually I, explained things that didn't yeah. make sense, like their little tree village. I, yeah, I hope I'm wrong, okay? Uh, but if there is, is writing is incompetent, as we've seen in many other shows, they won't. Uh, back to, you know, the uh, security people landing. They land in different spots. Spread out and... Yeah. And uh, they, they'll dwell <laughs> on it a friend. lot. Like, like, there's a couple of... Again, like, so if we go from... Cutting back to them flying down, finding a spot to land, landing, getting out, and people watching them land. We're at at least a minute to two minutes of just stuff. But they, they needed to show the friend seeing them land and that they're looking for They somebody. could do that, yeah. But so they needed it. that bit, yep. Um, and or arrives at this place and they cut back to uh, flashback. This scene, like, what she says is actually important exposition and it's delivered in a, in a logical enough way where they're discussing it amongst themselves, like, leave him here, can't leave him here because if they'll wipe out everybody alive, they'll kill him. people that are dead. And so th yep. th that's perfectly good exp exposition that's justified in the scene between the characters. Because they're having also, a disagreement. Yes, that's and they need also to information yep. that the audience needs. Yes. Well done. Good scene. Okay. Uh, so... There, there are scenes that are not incompetent, but that's the baseline. That's the bare minimum we should expect. But writing has gotten so bad that they can't even achieve that in a lot of shows. Uh, but it means that we praise it when it happens. It doesn't like. I feel <laughs> sad we are even praising it. It shouldn't be praiseworthy. It should be expected. <laughs> okay. Anyway, they find the foster mum because that's the address of uh, Cassian and Andor. Yep, so that makes sense. They have the robot. They think he's got a log, and then ah, oh, you know, just like contrivance. Uh, he he, Andor Cassian guy. He calls the robot because he gave him a com link. It's not terrible. It is a contrivance, but it's not. It's not by far. There's nowhere near the worst I've seen. Yeah, not and they haven't made this droid super intelligent. Mm. He's a little bit daft. Yeah, and so he wouldn't automatically think to put it on mute. Like you yeah, know, C three PO or somebody might think just turn it off or something. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't seem like there might necessarily be a mute setting with um because it happens in um, A New Hope when Luke yeah. is talking to three PO. And, and, and so stuff. you know, it's getting broadcast, and the mm -hmm. was just kind of like. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> and they uh, they track the signal. That seems appropriate with the technology yep. that they have. Uh, and then they get a lock for where it is, and it's about a 10-minute walk away. And so they're on their way there. And uh, so this is where we have suspense. Oh, look at this. Now they're having a meeting, and we know that the authorities, the people are hunting him, know where they're, and they're on their way, and there's a time limit happening. It's yeah. like, oh! This is good. Stuff's actually happening now. Ah, this is... <laughs> This is what you would have hoped in a show, a bare minimum, right? And that they finally managed to achieve it in the third episode. Yeah, so now they're, you know, going back and forth about the price. Yeah, and... yeah they barter a bit. Yep. Then it cuts to um, her and she gets... Yeah, friend comes, tells her that the guys are here looking for Andor or Cassian. His name is Cassian Andor and I go between Cassian and I don't know. And then they find out, um, uh, you know... He dumped him in. Well, well, the reveal actually was well done. He's like, don't go, uh, don't do what. Um, he can take care of himself. And she's like, how do you know it's about him? She's like, like who? Yeah, who? Um, how do you know we're talking about? How, and and that's the reveal. Like, he was, uh, you would only know that it's talking about if you knew that uh, Andor was of the race of the planet. And if he, he was one of the very few people who knows it, I mean, he's one of the very few people that would have tipped them off. And his the guilt is on his face, and so that's that's fine. Yep. And you know, um, he of course feels a bit guilty. Back to the bartering, they do one thing which is which annoys me. Right. So as they're talking, he eventually reveals. Uh, maybe we're not there yet. Oh yeah. No, are. I think it's a bit later. No, no, it is. He's revealed the um, device. Yes. The device, right? And I'm not sure we'll see it, but it, it's in between them on on something. Okay. Yep. Um, an imperial toolkit of some device. If I get so, it's right here. Okay. As they're talking, they walk very, very far away from it, and this thing is massively valuable. If I was selling this, I would be reluctant to let go of it. He's asking I would be for seven thousand credits. Like. A lot of money. Yes. A lot of money, right? His, his emergency flight off world that was to be discreet was 500. Mm -hmm. And so this is more than enough for him to get off world and set himself up somewhere. And it is insanely valuable, so much so that Cassian risks his life multiple times to try and get it back. But if this is so valuable, you wouldn't have let it even out of your person. You wouldn't have let go of the thing, I feel. You would hold it. You wouldn't put it down. Just, oh, yeah. It's just, it's just there. Put Have it back in your bag. Exactly. Put it in your hands. Keep it. But, and so this is, it feels like a contrivance because it's purposely forced to create the tension later on in the episode where he waltzes casually away from it and in conversation, Cassian follows him and they end up talking, you know, on the other end of the the large room, leaving this hugely valuable thing on the other side. It's like, it just... Rub me. There was like that. Does, I don't think you'd but do it's, that. But it's, it's also a, it's a, not a it's not a terrible happens. contrivance. Yeah. I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility. It's I, just annoying. It's just very unlikely for how valuable that is, and it shows here like how unaware he, like he, he forgot about it. You're telling me Cassian, who's supposed to be clever, forgot about it. Well, he's gotten thing. very distracted by this guy saying that he knows who he is and that he's been watching him and stuff. Like he's mm. getting very suspicious, and so he's yeah. very focused on this fellow. Yeah. Look, like I said, it's not the worst contrivance in the yeah. world but it definitely is and so because um, anyway so the reason why I pulled the gun on him is like um, uh, he yeah, started asking questions about his past didn't he or something how do you know I, f I forget exactly well it started off asking about how he got it yeah and then he started implying that he knows more about him than mm -hmm. he should yeah and uh, he has certain skills that he's interested in I, I, the fact that he stole it and it's like he, he asked him how do you steal it? and he's like you know, they're arrogant. I just walked in like I pretended I... Had some dirty clothes and a toolkit and I walked in. Yeah, like revealing that um, he has confidence and he can be a bit clever. Would have been cool to see him actually do it because we it haven't seen been. him do anything particularly clever. And so I'm hoping that it's leading up to him yeah. doing sneaky stuff yeah. like this. He headbutted a guy who happened to die for reasons. That's about <laughs> as... <laughs> Competent as well, he's yeah, managed. Yeah, we haven't seen him do anything else particularly interesting. This guy, though... He, he seems to be clever. He, like, he rigged the doors with explosives on his yeah, way we'll see in. That in a second. And then he sends out a decoy as well. And so this guy's on the ball. Yeah. Um, I so, kind of like this, their kind they, of alarm system. Yeah, they, I think that's, yeah, with a, a bit of a rebellious population and they're finding peaceful ways of resisting. Yeah, yeah 
Yeah, and they works. kind of mention earlier on when they're saying that they're going to go there that they mm-hmm. won't find it easy and that people won't yeah. be cooperative. Yeah. And so they set off an alarm throughout the whole city that gets passed along and everybody's aware that they're there and going through. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to get a shot of the guy. Yeah, these guys. Their uniforms, I don't hate. I actually think yeah. they're not bad. They're... they're Padded, and I would assume with some type of uh, ballistic resistant or blaster resistant material, uh, but it looks functional enough. And because it's padding, it would like you don't need it cut in such a specific way to allow movement because it would fold and move with you. Uh, and it has the look of uh, almost imperial, but not imperial. And so I have to say, there's one thing that I enjoyed that mm-hmm. was back in episode one when he's talking with his superior, mm-hmm. and the superior kind of looks at him and goes, "Have." you altered your uniform <laughs> he's like yeah a bit here and there a Sorry. bit of tailoring and i kind of enjoy that because when you see the others it's they're a lot more just i agree and, and revealed something about his character yeah, as well he takes Ooh. pride in his job he wants to look mm-hmm. respectable and, and he treats his uniform well yeah better than others and like, so... he's got more characterization than the main <laughs> character and you see the others walking through and they look a little bit more like standard issue Mm -hmm. outfits and his is a lot more form fitting and fitting just right and it just shows that he he wants wants Mm -hmm. to be portrayed a certain way yes so they're they're banging the the alarm it goes back to the scene more conversation about um i want you to join me basically and then they're at the door they're at the door yeah, did the explosion already happen? No, because he's like, what are they waiting for? And he's like, oh, reinforcements. Basically, oh, yeah, and then then he sets off one of the explosions. Yes. Yeah, it's like uh, rule number one, uh, make, sh- make sure you... Yeah, you like, exit on your yeah, on way, your way in, in or something. Or something. Like, yeah. You know, like, clever. Like, that, that's a line that, you know, is a little convoluted, but I can see the logic behind it, because you would never always be able to achieve it. Uh, but, but know how you're going to get into yeah, out yeah, of the situation. Like, like yeah. okay, I, I, I'll, I'll, you know. It's just one of those ones where their attempt at cleverness is passable and acceptable, where in Rings of Power they try and say things, you know, to be clever, and they just spout nonsense. Whereas this makes sense. One, okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. Especially in his line of work, yeah. make sure you know how you're getting out. Yeah, it's not like, not the best in the world, but it's not dumb, and I'm, I'd be happy with just not dumb, okay? <laughs> um, so that explosion, though, sets off kind of like a chain reaction, and... Uh, this is like a former factory, so I guess, but seems weird that they have such heavy things hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, I still. couldn't figure out what they were and why all these heavy things are hanging from I, the I, ceiling. Yeah, and if this is a, like a factory that they've closed down, maybe you would just make sure you lower them for the and sake that them, it yeah. could fall on people, which is the danger of this scene. And again, the only reason, like, there's no logical reason it really makes sense why they'd be left up there in an abandoned factory. Because um, even when, like... Because this is the middle of the day. Yeah, so yeah. if it was a working factory, there would be people there. Anyone who has any thought of potential hazard in this abandoned factory, when you're moving the important stuff out, you probably just have some... Anyone, I don't know, just let the chains go, blow them down, even drop them when no one's there. Just something, Right. So it, it felt like the only reason of there is just to justify this scene because now they drop in the middle of the battle and they have to dodge them as they drop. Yeah. And it's like, it's very contrived. Yeah, but it does make for an action scene. You know, so like it, we'll just... You know, they swing and they fall. Like, really? And they don't even, like, that... It's this weird pulley big thing. Uh, and uh, why was that hanging from the... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There's, but it's a big really scene big with things weights. flying. Yeah, and they get into a bit of a gunfight. But hey, at least it's action. At least yeah, it's something. Yeah, he's going back to try to find his precious yeah, he, stuff. Yeah, exactly. He, the guy who, who met him is like, we've got to leave. And Cassie is like, no, it's so expensive. I've got to get it. And I, uh, like, I admit, yeah, if it's expensive and valuable, I could see him trying to get it. But then it makes me wonder, why'd you let it go in the first place? Why'd you forget about it if it's that important, mate? Um, so... Yeah, the scene continues. They fight. They escape. Um, uh, they run into the girl. So at this point, there's people running everywhere. Yeah. There's people setting off alarms. She <sighs> comes to an intersection or something with them and turns around and goes the other way. Yeah. So they grab her. Now, we might have missed the scene where that happens, um, but it cuts to her being locked up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we missed that. But yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, she just... It. All she did was... She's running, sees him, runs in the opposite direction. Like everyone Like everyone, else. but that's the... Oh, we'll grab you because oh, you're you suspicious. Scared. Yeah. And then the boyfriend comes and he's like, what are you doing? They tell him to stop. 
and then he doesn't stop because she's bleeding and and then he j just walks towards him and then they shoot him um and look trigger happy like untrained this is the guy there he's trembling already so i'm not like yeah he's a bit we've seen, somebody's running at him we've seen similar things in the real world where people get shot um, unjustly and stuff i won't even mention it uh, yeah don't get it yeah so that's like a justified scene, but of course, you know, she's distraught. The boy, but the boyfriend, he betrayed him, but then he was trying to help her. He, so the guy that we like is getting a bit flummoxed by explosions, and now there's two of them. It seems to be a bit coordinated. People aren't responding on their radios. Yep. Um, then they know, well, they think that it'll pass through this area, so spread it out, get in, get ready. and uh, So they're all hiding, ready to ambush them. Yep. Uh, there are people here yeah, on, the, on, the, on the roof, all around, ready for the ambush. Uh, the leader guy thinks he's ready, but they get the drop on him because uh, they run, ran into two other security guys, took them out, went in the back door. And, uh, and now, uh -huh, so they have him. So they find out how many how many of them mm -hmm. there are. Yeah, so there was a, like, a well-set-up moment um, where the guy that was... Uh, that did the shooting, right? He was sent back to uh, the dropship. But we saw that dropship, yes. and uh, the friend to Andor, who worked in the scrapyard... Had just been walking away from He it. was walking away in a very conspicuous he manner. He had his gloves on. Exactly. Yep. And I was like, but yeah, he clearly had done something to the ship. And we find out what he did. He attached a chain to it, to something really heavy, and uh, that just makes it... You know, unflyable. And well, it gets Unloaded, lodged. Yeah. In, yeah, it gets lodged in this thing, and then that sends it around. And I do like what they do here, right? So they have it land and explode. The explosion happens. Then they look, and we only really see what he would have seen when he turned, and he didn't see that it was their ship. He just saw, he just saw an explosion, yeah. and then he thinks, "What are they behind us now?" Which causes and how them many of them are there? Exactly. And I was like. Oh, that's actually a realistic kind of reaction to yeah. that, and I like that they don't, they suddenly don't have information that they wouldn't have based on what because we see what they see, mm -hmm. and so he can't suddenly know they just destroyed one of our ships. And it's incompetent like, writing yeah. would have done that, but no, they don't even know that. And so, okay, I yeah. give it credit, but again, this is like base level stuff. <laughs> but still, I'm glad. Like, I'm glad they're doing it. I'm glad that. They're, they're, they're doing just their being job. Comp mildly competent. Uh, it's like drought water in a desert, basically. Um, yeah, see, that would put it behind us. What's going on? So they go and they find, oh, there's multiple speeders here. Which one Pre do you want? Convenient. They were after a speeder and it's just in the Well, he, remember that in the thing, he asks where they could get some. Okay, good and point. And he said, back in town, I'll show you. Okay. And he takes him to them. Good point, good point. Them to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty obvious what they do here, though. It's like, because Cassian looks to him and says, how many of those rigged explosives do you have left? And then they cut away. And it's like, oh, OK, so they're going to put an explosive in one of the speeders and send it out as a decoy. Yeah. And then set it off, which is exactly what they do. But that is a lot, kind of, it's a cliche kind of move. I've seen in lots of movies. But but at least they're not doing something particularly stupid. Yeah. It's, it's just it's just predictable. They, they weren't turfing explosives at them while they were being shot at. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. They shoot the speeder, it crashes, they get near it, and uh, then... Eh. So, yeah, boss dude's looking a bit disheveled here because he mm -hmm. was captured and bound yep. and they've let him loose, so he's lost his hat somewhere along the line. And there they come. You'd think you would let it explode before you fly, drive away. To distract them? Yeah, they, they drive past them and they literally point guns at them. It's like, don't you have the remote thing? Because we see... Yeah, he even presses it. It's like... Should have done that before you, you know, um, went out of cover and exposed yourself. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, make um, mistakes. But anyway, explodes and takes it out. I like the the response of these guys, especially him and the yep. other leader guy. Yes. They seem legitimately kind of distraught, especially the um, the guy we like. He, he's, uh, he's like calling for backup, wondering what's going on. And you get the feeling that he actually likes his lads, that he's... Uh, yeah, you know, he cares about them and he's trying to get rescue to them as soon as mm. possible. This guy is completely shell-shocked. Yeah. And that would make this series interesting if they actually show 
both sides and not just the evil moustache twirling empire. <laughs> yeah. But what about the regular soldiers? That is, this is their job. They feel they're doing the right thing to support their family and keep peace and other things like that. Because at this point, it's the Republic. Well, it's the Empire, because the Empire was established, but there's a lot of vestiges of the Republic left, like yes. the Senate and other things like that. And so from his mind, he probably still thinks he's on the side of the good guys. Uh, a lot of them probably do, because it's early on in the yes. Empire's reign. It hasn't shown the, the how bad they can yeah, be. Yeah, you know, the Death Star isn't destroying planets yet. Um, and they, they'll still be doing bad things. And but yeah, I like that they show this. And if they just showed the good parts and condensed everything, they might have had something. But the fact that they had such filler in those first two episodes gives me bad impression that a lot of this show is going to be incompetent and boring and filler. Perhaps. I'm still optimistic that they were just trying to set things up and mm -hmm. that maybe they'll have more fun coming up. Uh, I, See, I, I can... I once, had that, I once had that optimism. <laughs> then the Wheel of Time happened and they get... no None of them get benefited out from me anymore. And so far... My scepticism has been true in every instance except House of the Dragon. And when I'm wrong, I'm happy I'm wrong because I want a good show. Uh, but at the moment, all the other times, the scepticism has proved very true that this won't get better because there's signs of deep incompetence uh, in the writing here. And then, yes, um, uh, lots of slow like shots of the expressions and the aftermath. I think it's mostly appropriate yeah, for this. Like, this guy is just shell-shocked. He's never caused death, had been caused yeah. of death before, and he's mm -hmm. not quite sure how to deal with it all. I like, hey, there's farms. They show some farms. It's like, uh, if we eventually see an order... Maybe they won't. Maybe I skipped over it. No, it's still yeah, there. It's still coming. It he stands there for quite a while. He does. Well, everybody's running around trying to help people, and he's just not sure what to do. Lots of yeah, water. Going across lots of water, it seems I, they, like. It seems like a well-irrigated kind yeah, of farmland. Yeah, so like land. rice like, and stuff. I like seeing that, because those are just logical. And these are things where you, it's not a scene de devoted just to show the farms. It's a scene of the, showing him escaping, which is, yeah, you know, it's good to see. The but then throw in some elements of the world as well. That's yeah. when you can do it. Or good when, world Yeah, when uh, um, you're doing multiple things to achieve... Uh, uh, the contextualization of the world, but also what's happening in the story. And then, yeah, showing the characters, they're all a bit distraught. There's flashbacks. Get to the ship. I do like Andor's kind of, watch what is he like? He has to stop and just like, holy crap, this is a nice ship. Look at this thing. Ooh. Yeah, he's been in little dumps. Yeah, like, and... Like, and it is. Uh, so, look, hey, that's the most characterization that we see from all those. Is like, he likes ships, it seems like. Let's see if that. At least was... that's probably the nicest ship he's ever exactly. seen. Exactly. Let's see if there's uh, something that uh, they'll like mention it or it'll come up later or something it'll be cool if just give him personality it'll be cool if he loves spaceships and he's a bit something. of a space he has a hobby <laughs> of just like you know knowing what the best spaceships are and his interest in new ones and like you know how there are car nuts it'll be cool if what if he's like a spaceship nut that would be character bro, hobby something give him personality please but i kind of like the ship as they go in it it, yeah. it rings yeah had a bit true of true of some of uh the feel yeah you're right the see, see, the, falcon. see the markings on the thing uh, that's yeah. millennium falcon had similar kind of where well, it was white or no it was like a beige kind of um stained coming white coming up as yeah but uh, it, it, and the cockpit like the is cockpit very uh, falconish yeah yeah flashback and then you know he wakes up on the other ship because that's the foster and mother smiles and that's it uh they fly away and that's the episode and that is andor uh so even going through a recap my opinions are very much the same it's like episode three had the only thing that was interesting in it i wouldn't call it good i'd call it average at best but episode one and two were horribly boring they were slow they were. And if that is a sign of the show to go, that this is going to be a boring show with speckled levels of just averageness in, it's going to be a bad show overall. Because I think even, like, when you look at, say, Boba Fett or The Mandalorian, they started off really fast-paced. Like, you got straight into action, yeah. they were straight away doing things. I felt like they kind of missed that on this one. Yeah, yeah. I would actually say, like, the writing in particularly Mandalorian gets really bad. Uh, but you're consistently getting action. But at least there's story. stuff happening, you could yeah. say. So I would probably still give it maybe a, a three out of ten. Four at most. And I'd say four is generous in my mind. <laughs> uh, but you'd still give it a four or five? Yeah, between mm. four and five. So probably four and a half. Yeah. 
Then, then I would come back for more and be fine watching Gee, I, I would not. I would be so, like... I would check. I would have checked out at episode two. Episode three would not have brought me back in. It was just so average, even in the action, and there wasn't enough of it. It wasn't anything particularly interesting, characters I like or anything like that. I would not give a crap. In actual, I don't give a crap about this show. The only reason I'm giving attention is because to let you guys know what it's like. Give us a review because you want to hear our thoughts, and that's. But yeah, so I don't recommend it. You know, uh, we'll see what happens later on, and uh, because that's what we do here. What do we do? We stay on watch. Shadow of the Conqueror is the breakout debut novel by Shad M. Brooks. Truly incredible. I absolutely loved this book. Honestly, it's one of the best books I've ever read. S. Keith Hall. Now, Shadow of the Conqueror is coming to you in an epic graphic novel adaptation with the incredibly talented art of Mike S. Miller. This will bring its dark, confronting story to fans and new readers alike in another beloved format, making the story more accessible than ever before and enabling current fans to enjoy it in new ways. I was engrossed in the tale of the Conqueror. I laughed, cried, growled with anger, and shouted with joy. But also during this entertaining ride of emotion, I came away with mental growth and new perspective on the human condition. Andrew Johnson. Mike is a 28-year veteran of the comic book industry, famous for his work on DC Comics' Injustice series and George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones-related graphic novels. I've read so many novels I've lost count, fantasy genre or otherwise, but in my opinion, this is one of the best. Seton 425 the author of Shadow of the Conqueror, Shad M. Brooks, has been a fan of both comic books and Mike's work for many years, and is thrilled to be working with him to bring this graphic novel to the highest standards possible. I don't typically listen to audiobooks multiple times, but this is my fourth time through and I'm loving it more each time. Highly recommend for anyone who loves fantasy action stories. C. Barker the book will be separated into four graphic novel volumes. This first one, entitled Enemies of Self, has 48 pages of stunning art visualizing the amazing and unique world of Everfall with some of the best work Mike has ever done. It must be admitted that there was a large amount of skepticism when this book was recommended. However, a story that would leave the reader hooked and begging for more was not something that was expected. The overall plot and flow of the story was simply phenomenal. I highly recommend this book. It is filled with action, humor, love, hate, science, and the psychology of the human condition. History Rewriter Separating the book into four volumes gives great opportunity to adapt more of the work and even add new content not seen in the original novel. Far from being given secondary regard as a token adaptation that doesn't accurately represent the source material, the graphic novels are being made with the intent to form a crucial part of the Everfall story, revealing fascinating aspects to the characters and world not found in any other format. Powerful and gut-wrenching. I laughed, introspected, winced, wondered, cried, and will be revisiting this world. Michael Larson. At the time of launching this Indiegogo campaign, the graphic novel is completed and ready to print. This is not to fund the creation of the graphic novel, but to give you the chance to get your hands on it. We will be able to place a print order as soon as this launch campaign ends, and you will get the graphic novel in your hands much sooner without needing to wait for the graphic novel's completion. With the launch of the graphic novel, I'm very excited to announce that during this Indiegogo campaign, I will be releasing a refined version of Shadow of the Conqueror as a second edition version. This is not the sequel, but a more refined and polished version of Shadow of the Conqueror, with an incredible new cover made by Chris McGrath. The second edition will at first be an exclusive in the Indiegogo campaign where you will be able to get your hands on a limited edition version of the second edition novel with the graphic novel covers, which will not be available ever again once this launch campaign ends. 
And in addition to this, we've gone even further and made premium, high-class, display-quality, collector-edition, leather-bound versions of the second edition novel and graphic novel, both of which will be available for a limited time during this launch campaign. Way better than I thought it would be. Bought because I watched Shad on YouTube. I never thought his book would be as good as this is. Kinda blown away. Jevin Curley. With special collector edition covers and limited Everfall merchandise, this is your one and only chance to secure these special versions of this phenomenal epic fantasy graphic novel. Just because the mainstream comic book industry is declining in both quantity and quality, doesn't mean we still can't make great graphic novels for those who love them and attract new fans to the format. Please share this Indiegogo campaign with as many people you feel would be interested and who would love to enjoy such a visually stunning and emotionally riveting story as this Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror, Volume 1, Enemies of Self. <laughs>